Yo, what's going on you guys? It's Meta Nine and 4 here, back with another video today. And finally, after pretty much being over a year, it is time for another review. It has been quite a long time since I have made a review. I'm finally able to do one today because I actually had was available to make a review. And that's why we're here. We're going to finally do another review. And in this review, if you have watched my YouTube short, then you have noticed that last year in November, I actually teased what the next review was going to be. So that is what we're going to be taking a look at today. So in this review, what we're going to be taking a look at is something very, very meaningful to me because it is a huge part of my childhood. And the fact that last year, as my early Christmas gift, I finally managed to snag one of these and I'll get to that in just a sec. This is a special review, a very special review to me. And honestly, I'm just excited we're finally going to be able to review this. So without any further ado, in this review, what we're going to be taking a look at are these. That is right. We are going to be taking a look at the Power Rangers SPD Delta Squad Megazord. Otherwise known, for those of you guys who are on the Japanese side of things, we are going to be taking a look at the Deka Ranger Robo from Otsu Sentai Deka Ranger. So, if you guys don't know what that means, for those of you guys who don't understand Japanese, basically Super Sentai is the Japanese equivalent to Power Rangers. Super Sentai came first, then Power Ranger came over here in America. So, what the name translates to is Police Squadron Deka Ranger. So, that is the name of the title in English, and well, that's where these are from. But because I will grow up here in America, I am a more of a Power Rangers side of things, so I know this as, well, the Delta Squad Megazord. So, we're going to be taking a look at these, and as usual, we would normally take a look at the box, but I do not have the box, unfortunately. I got these guys loose, but here's a picture of what the box would have looked like. So, here's the American version of the box from Power Rangers SPD. And then here we have the Japanese version. Now, a funny story with the Japanese version is the fact that there was three different releases. So the box you're looking at now is version A, which was a prototype of the Delta Squad Megazord on the box art. Then when you have the version 2, that box art, I believe, was red. And also the fact it had a fixed uh, version of the toy. It wasn't a prototype anymore. And then version 3 was the one that America would take and turn into the Delta Squad Megazord, which is when the head horns are shortened. And I believe it had... a uh, some like minor modifications, but we would take that one to become the Delta Squad Megazord. So also for clarification, the version that I have here specifically is the Japanese version. Let me explain. So basically, history lesson real quick. So Bandai America is the toy company that made Power Ranger toys at the time. So basically, that was around the time period where the company started to make really, really stupid budget costs. And ultimately, the toys suffered because of it. So in this case, the American version of every single one of these Zords not only had consisted of missing paint apps and they looked less nicer than the Japanese ones, but also the fact that it really made sincerely questionable changes that I still don't get to this day. Like, for example, the numbers on the sides right here of the Zords, they removed those and the SPD writing on some of the Zords, which is very, very strange. Also, some of the silver and chrome trim on the Japanese version here, which we're going to take a look at in a sec once we get a closer look at the Delta Runners. But those were also removed and the SPD stickers were on the Japanese version, they're stickers. They printed them and it was just like black and white. It looked very boring and like overall, and also all oh, the... An annoying thing that I pointed out in my Transformers views, the wheels were not painted on the American version. They were just left black. So overall, it was an overall... If we're talking about like an overall opinion, then the American version, if you can get it, it's not bad. But the Japanese version is significantly better aesthetic-wise because it just looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing. I said aesthetic twice and I apologize for that. But, right, so we're going to take a look at every single one of the Zords individually. So in Japan, these are called the Dekka Machines. Pat Striker, Pat Gyro, Pat Trailer, Pat Siren, I believe, and then Pat Armor. In America, these are the Delta Runners, the Zords of the Power Rangers SPD B Squad. Delta Runners 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we're going to take a look at every single one of the Zords individually, starting with the main attraction, Delta Runner 1. So let's go ahead and remove the other Zords real quick. We'll take a look at them in just a second. Okay, so. And also, if I add in Power Ranger sound effects, please forgive me, I can't help it. So anyways, let's take a look at Delta Runner 1 here. This is the Red Ranger Zord, aka Deca Red's uh, Deca Machine. And uh, yeah, it's a futuristic looking police car. And honestly, if this if this was actually a uh, 
if they actually made a like drivable version of this, honestly, I think it would be pretty sick to drive them in my opinion. But anyway, so as you can see right here, let's take a closer look. We have the S speed. Oh, and also I should mention one other concern. Let me mention when I was first uh, searching for this figure, uh, let me search, tell you the three main concerns that I have with this figure. Concern one, that the figure would be broken and that like, like for example, the leg would be like ripped off or that, that like maybe it was missing like the fist or something like that. So like if it was actually broken, that's what's concern number one that I had when searching for a Delta Squad Megazord. Concern number two, was that the electronics would not work. Like for example, the battery compartment is right here. And because I have the Japanese version, it uses the really cool system where you just take like a screwdriver or a sharp needle, you put it in this hole, and then you slide the cover off. You don't need the screw like in the American uh, versions of the toy. So honestly, I think that's a lot more convenient and less stressful way to do things. So that was concern number two that I had that the electronics wouldn't work. And concern number three, yellowing. And as you can see, saw with all the Zords, they have quite a bit of white on them. Oh. It's not time for you to show your special feature yet. I'll show it in the moment, right, Delta Runner 1? But anyways, yeah, yellowing. Yellowing is a serious concern that I had because I've seen pictures where the whole thing looks so ugly and it's yellow. And I know there is a way to get rid of yellowing, but my concern with that is that I'm scared that if I do the procedure, that I'll get rid of all like the other paint apps. So I, I'm sure that some of you Galaxy Defenders know more about that procedure than me. And if you know for a fact that it won't harm any of them, then let me know in the comments down below, please, because I'd very much like to uh, cure some of the yellowing on these figures. And thankfully, uh, there's not a lot of yellowing on the Delta Squad, on the Delta to run is here thankfully and and on camera they look pretty white but in real life there is you can see the yellowing and thankfully there is not a lot of it so i was actually blessed by the lord that i got a, a figure that not only was complete the electronics work which we'll get to in a sec and that there's very minimal yellowing so thank god for that and the fact that i'm just so happy to have one of these anyways back to taking a closer look at delta runner one so we got the spd logo right here we have the nice uh, silver Bandai silver paint for the headlights right here. The number one is a bit beat up because mine is used. We got a nice silver trim right here on the windows, the main window of Delta Runner 1 right here. Right here we got the speaker hole. Unfortunately, this SPD sticker is uh, torn because mine was pre used. We got some chrome right here. Very, very shiny chrome. Very, very nice. And I believe that in, uh, there's a bit of a very minimal list of uh, die cast in this guy. I'll have to recheck that, but I think there is a little bit of die cast, so that's also cool. The sirens, the inside of the sirens, they actually added silver paint on the inside, so it actually looks like proper sirens that spin, which is cool. There is actually silver trim on the siren, which was removed in the American version, so another down uh, point for the American version. Here we have the SPD logo on the sides here, which also was removed on the American version. You have the SPD logo on the back. Mine is eventually a bit faded, which sucks, but it is what it is. We got some silver paint right here. And this is the same thing. We got the number one right here. The wheels are nice and painted, and an on and off switch is right here, and we'll get to that in a sec. And also, I believe it's very possible that I may have the, uh, the Bandai Asia version of the Delta Squad Megazord. The reason why I say that is because on the Japanese version, the on and off switch has X and O. Uh, on it. No, O and X. O means on and X means off, but mine actually has it in English, O and off. But yet in the back here, it just says Bandai. So I'm not sure if mine's the Bandai Asia version or the actual Japanese version. So if there's a way to verify that, let me know in the comments down below. So very cool, very aesthetic wise. It does roll very, very well, as you guys can see. And well, yeah, said Delta One Run. And let me go ahead and show you guys the special features of this guy before we go on to the rest of the Zords. So if you guys have seen Power Engine SPD like I do, then you'll remember when combining into Megazord mode, there are like claws in the back that grab Delta Runners 4 and 5 to combine into the arms. This actually has that. So what we're going to do is, well, Delta Runner 1 was doing it earlier. We're going to go ahead and we're going to lift this up. And inside, we got the claws. So you can actually recreate the Megazord combination sequence. Or when the Deca machines are, well, combining together. I forget. Gatai. That's the Japanese word for combine. So it doesn't actually grab onto them, but it's cool that they actually had that attention to detail there. So that's pretty cool that they actually have the claws there for the Delta Runner 1 here. That's that's pretty cool, in my opinion. And then another thing you can do, we'll get, uh, there, there are a bit more features that you can do with Delta Runner 1 here, which we will get to when we bring in the other doors. So let's go ahead and take a look at the electronics now. So we just flip the switch and you should get, oh, there we go. All right, let me go ahead and flip the switch. What? What's going on here? Ah, there we go. Flip the switch and we'll get 
You get the activation noise right there from uh, Deck Ranger. So all we gotta do now is we just press the button. And we get the Deca Ranger sirens going on. And as you saw, it's not only the sirens, the main sirens themselves that light up, as you just saw. But also on the other side, it has underside lighting, which is sick. Yeah, so very cool. So when you're rolling this around, you actually get like under lighting, like in uh, Grand Theft Auto V, how you can customize your car to have like under lights. So that's actually pretty cool. You can even see them from right here, I think. So yeah, pretty cool. And also another thing that it's interesting about this is that the, the toy has a way of letting you know if you let it on or not. So if you leave it alone for a couple seconds, it will do the activation noise again, just so it lets you know that the toy is still on. So that's very, very cool as well. And so, uh, yeah. Oh, and also another thing I should talk about as well that was changed in the American version, the type of speaker. The type of speaker in the American version was actually a more crappy speaker because the speaker was a lot more quiet in the American version. While this one, as you guys can hear, pretty good sound quality. So another upside to get the Japanese version or the Bandai Asia one in comparison to the American version. But if you have to get the American version, then it's not a bad pick. It's just that the Japanese one has better pros than the American one does uh, pros. So there we have that. So now for comparison, just to get an idea of how... Oh, camera, can you stop moving by yourself, please? Thank you. All right, now for comparison, let's go ahead and bring something here. Here we have a gigawatt from the Back to the Future Transformers crossover. Just so you can get an idea. See, that was the standby noise for when the toy lets you know that it's still on. So you guys just heard it, so let's go ahead and turn it off for now. So we brought in Gigawatt here from review number 21, if I remember correctly. This is review number 23. And well, just to get an idea how he scales, Gigawatt is the size of a deluxe class transformer here. So you guys can see how that works out. So as you can see, that Gigawatt here is actually pretty much the same size, I think, as a uh, Delta Runner 1. Slightly bigger, but still. So you guys can get a sense of scale and how that works out. We'll go ahead and bring some more comparisons. Uh, let's, prove, let's compare him to an old uh, deluxe class figure, because Gigawatt, I think he's like the size of a modern deluxe class figure, a War for Cybertron trilogy uh, figure, because I think he's a, a remold of a Sideswipe, if I remember correctly. But let's compare him to an old deluxe. So here we have uh, Titans Returns Hot Rod here from Transformers. So we can see how he scales with a much older um, Deluxe class figure. As you can see, a hot rod is a bit bigger compared to Delta Runner 1. Let me zoom on the camera a bit. There we go. As you can see, a bit bigger. Pretty much the same width, except that the Delta Runner 1 here is a bit chunkier in the front and a bit more flat, while a hot rod has like a more of a point. And also, the spoiler gives him a bit more width as well. So. There you have that. Oh, you're splitting up on me. Don't run one. Don't do that. So there we have Hot Rod. And let's bring him some Voyager class figures. We'll bring. We'll compare him to an elder Voyager first. So here we have uh, the Last Knight, Optimus Prime, from well, the Last Knight. So we can get an idea of how he scales with a previous Voyager class figure. Because as we know, Voyager class figures have been getting smaller. This was back when Voyager class figures were like twenty five dollars. Now they cost thirty bucks. Which Jesus Christ. I, I still don't like the fact that Voyagers cost 30 bucks nowadays. I prefer when they were a lot bigger and they would cost like $25. They didn't have the wheels painted. I had to do that myself, but still. I prefer bigger figures because it just feels like more worth the price. But anyways, enough of that. As we see, Prime here is a lot taller. Well, a lot longer, rather, not taller. Well, he is taller because it's a truck. Oh, I knocked the camera. My bad. Apologies. So there you have that. So there we have the last night of this prime. And let's go ahead and bring in a more like a uh, more recent uh, Voyager. Technically he's a leader, but he's actually a Voyager. Here we have Earthrise Optimus Prime, so that we can get an idea of how he scales with the current Voyager and uh, the Delta Runner one. Pretty much the same size as Prime. Prime is a bit longer from the feet, but in width, Delta Runner one is a lot uh, a lot wider. So we have that. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in a current leader. I only have one at the moment, so uh, 
Here he is with uh, Leader Class Kingdom Ultra Magnus, or as Emgo says it best, Magnus! I watch Emgo too much, you guys. That's why I'm, I always say Magnus! But anyways, so Magnus is quite significantly longer than Delta Runner 1 here, especially when attached to the trailer. Even, I think, with without the trailer, I think he, uh, Magnus is uh, a bit uh, smaller than that. So there you have that, and there you have Magnus! I'll stop now, I'm sorry. And then let's go ahead and, uh, just because, here he is with uh, the Generations Legends class, Optimus Prime, and or Reveal the Shield Optimus Prime, because they technically re-released this, re this figure for that series. So, just so you can see how he scales and... Yeah, just so if you guys wonder what a Legends class figure scales with uh, Delta Runner 1 here. There you have that. Right, so that is Delta Runner 1. All done. So now we're going to go ahead and put Delta Runner 1 to the side. And now we're going to move on to Delta Runner 2. This is the Blue Ranger Zord, aka Deca Blue. This is the Pat Gyro. It's a helicopter. And uh, it looks cool. So... Unfortunately, I would say that there is a bit of yellowing on the front of Delta Runner 2 here, but thankfully, all this white is the original white, so thank God for that. Oh, and also, this trim right here is not included in the American version, so it's just plain red, which is boring looking. But So as you can see, this is in its uh, roller mode, so when it uh, rolls out of the deck command base, it rolls on its wheels, like so. So it has two wheels on the back, and then one landing gear on the front. And it also has a gun right here on the side. It has some blasters, which are not painted on the American version. And we have the SPD sticker, which looks very, very shiny. Which is just printed. Uh, actually, I think it's absent on the American version, actually. We have the SPD logo right there, number two. Silver trim, number two right there. And yeah, it looks cool. So as you saw, it rolls quite well, I would say. So now let's go ahead and get it into flight mode. So what we're going to want to do is just flip up the landing gear. Flip up these tail fins right here. Then pull out the gyros. And there we have Delta Runner 2 in its flight mode. When it's actually in flight in the air. And yeah. So we got the actual like turbines underneath. Which as you also saw in the show, if you guys watch Power Rangers SPD, when Delta Runner 2 would go like this, these were also double as blasters so we can actually shoot the monsters, so that's pretty sick. The fact that it has like Gatling laser guns, that's cool. So in addition to these two blasters, it's armed with these two blasters here. Which is cool. So, all the special features that Delta Runner 2 can do here, it actually stores the Megazord handcuffs. So what we're going to do here, is we're going to just take this piece, pull it, to split the turbine. Same on the other side. Take it. Oh, shoot. That wasn't supposed to happen. Hey, what are you doing? That has never happened before. Hold on. The turbine's popped off. That's new. <laughs> That's never happened before. All right, but anyways, you take this off. Set Delta Runner 2 to the side. And what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to take this section here. There's a little post. Pull it out. Then. You connect two together, like so. Why do you not want to connect? There we go. And here we have the Megazord's handcuffs. And actually, you can attach them to Delta Runner 1, because if you noticed, on Delta Runner 1 here, there are two posts right here. And what you can do is you can actually split the handcuffs apart again, flip back up that post, and the same two holes that connect to the turbines, you can actually connect them to um, the Zord, Delta Runner 1 here. So you just connect them, Take it, plug it in, like so. Second one, same as the first. Take it, plug it in, and there we go. And this mode was never shown in the show, but it's a thing you can do. You can attach the handcuffs and you can drive around with it. So pretty, pretty cool that the toy comes with an exclusive mode. It's not seen on the show, and I don't think in the Japanese version either, but it's a thing that you can do if you want to do it, which is cool. Oh, I'm putting this on backwards. Put this one on first, there we go. And then this one, we put it on second. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and we'll flip back out the landing gear again. Collapse it in. And there we go. There you have Delta Runner 2. So real quick, we'll go ahead and get the scaling over with real quick. So we'll go ahead and bring back Earthrise Prime. So, so you can get a sense of scale here. 
And as you can see, about the same size, I would say, regarding length. And when it comes to height, Delta Runner 2 is obviously taller. And for Deluxe Class, let me bring back in a Gigawatt. So you can get a sense of scale, how it scales with a time machine. A bit longer, Delta Runner 2 is, compared to Gigawatt here. And then lastly, we'll bring in, we'll bring back in Generations Legends Prime. Very tiny. So there you have that, and that is Delta Runner 2. All nice and done. So now we shall move on to Zord number 3. Delta Runner 3, otherwise known as Patrailer. So here you have the Green Ranger Zord, and again, another case of yellowing where the other, the entire outside is unfortunately yellowing, but the inside, this compartment here, is pure white, which is nice. And also, unfortunately, the front is yellowing, which sucks. But not, again, it could have been significantly worse, but thankfully I got lucky. Thank God for that. I can't stop saying that because I'm that grateful for the fact that I have this toy. Because I've been hunting down this toy for literally my entire life, and I finally got one. And I'm not intending on selling it anytime soon. I'm not going to sell any of my toys, actually. So, yeah. I'm planning on keeping this for as long as I can. I'm procrastinating. I'm sorry, guys. But So, as you can see, uh, Delta Runner 3 is a armored truck. Which has the same details as uh, Delta Runner 2 with some minor differences. It has that same uh, silver trim with some different patterns, but still. Basically the same uh, aesthetic designs. And the sirens, well, the sirens are the same shape regarding like the T design, but they're not as like uh, creased out as um, as the, um, what's it called? Delta Runner 2's uh, lights. As you can see, they're more of like raised up while Delta Runner 2's siren lights here are like more like bent, like upwards, like a nice like slope. While these ones are like more like like angular down and then raised. And also the patterns, like I said, they are different. As you can see there. But it has the same designs, it still has the silver paint inside to give it a sense of realism. We have the cockpit right here, which also has silver trim and divided in three. Also, that's a very cool detail that I always liked about the Zords. The fact that depending on what Ranger Zord it is, like for example, one, two because the window is split and then three because the window is split in three sections so I honestly thought that was a very cool detail so that's very cool so let's take a closer look at Delta Runner 3 we got some silver trim on the giant grill which actually looks like uh, the Green Ranger's uh, helmet and the silver trim again it's absent on the American version and the wheels are not painted so we have that and then Come over to the side here, we have the SPD sticker again, SPD, number three, which is absent. And also actually right here, you can actually see the yellowing. So right here you see the pure white, and then right here is the yellowing. You can actually see it a lot better here. So again, if, they, if the process will not get rid of like the number three here, then please let me know so I can actually make these guys look brand new. Because I want these guys to not like be like ugly yellow anymore. But no, yeah. So if you guys know, then please let me know. So as you can see, Delta Runner 3 has... Uh, okay, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven wheels. Actually, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wheels. Okay, I'm stupid. And it rolls very well. Very, very well. Now, unfortunately, it does not turn. The, it does not turn because of the way that it's designed here. So, it does not turn. But it does have one special feature. So, this armored compartment that I mentioned earlier can open like it does in the show. So, we just push it. And it will reveal the gun for Megazord mode and the blade also for Megazord mode. And you can actually do what they do in the show here because an attack that Delta Runner 3 is able to do is the gun can be raised up to shoot at the monsters. You can actually do that here. So you see this like little post right here. So what you got to do is you have to plug in the gun, move it forward and raise it up. So you can actually do the shooting gun uh, gimmick that it did in the show, which is really, really cool. That they're actually faithful to that. So the gun just sticks out, raises up, and it blasts the uh, whatever uh, robot or monsters they're facing. So that's really, really cool that they actually uh, paid uh, good attention to detail. So that's really, really cool that they were able, they recreated that. And also, what you can do is another feature that we can do with um, Delta Runner 3 here, but that involves Delta Runner 4, which has to do with the sword, which I'll show you guys in a sec. But first, 
Let's go ahead and give some comparisons back. So we'll go ahead and bring back the last night Optimus Prime for length. So as you can see, Prime is quite long. Let's see how he scales with Delta Runner 3, shall we? With the trailer included. And as you can see, they are the exact same size. Well, slightly longer Prime, but still basically in the same size. Because Prime is a more beefier truck. Meanwhile, Delta Runner 3 is a smaller truck, but for a good reason, which we'll get to in a bit. And we have that. And because the truck cab is so small, here he is again with Legends Class Prime. So as you see, quite smaller. So yeah, we have that. And yeah, that's uh, Delta Runner 3. Let's go ahead and get these guys all oriented. Now we're down to the last two Zords. Starting with Delta Runner 4. This is Pat Armor. And uh, yeah, it's an armored vehicle. I'm not exactly sure what exactly this is supposed to be because this is this is meant to be a stylized police car. This is a helicopter or a hover type vehicle. This is an armored truck, but this is like an armored military vehicle. I wasn't really sure what Delta Runner 4 was supposed to be. It does have these turbines in the back, which is cool. But regard when it when it comes to the, like the actual type of vehicle it is, I have no clue. But it looks cool. So under here we have the underside. The wheels are not painted, but it actually makes sense because like the wheels like hidden, so you can't really see the hubcaps. As you can see here, the window again, it's split into four because it's the Yellow Ranger's Zord. And then here we have the SPD logo on the side, number four, right there. Nice silver trim right here on the grill and also silver trim on the windows. We have that same silver paint in the sirens as well as the SPD sticker. And then the same details on the side. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And also again, it rolls very well. Rolls very well. So the gimmick for Delta Runner 4 here is this actually is a spotlight. So to blind enemies and or for rescue missions, this would raise up like so. And then this would be a giant spotlight. So you can actually find people or blind enemies if in a fight. So there we Then also another feature, aside from this being a spotlight, this is also going to be the handle of the sword in Megazord mode. So if we take the handle in its position, and then we take the blade from Delta Runner 3 here. Go ahead and take the blade right here. Oh, and yeah, you can take out the whole compartment, but I try to be accurate to the show where just a half comes out. So the way to get the blade into sword mode, we just unfold this. And it has a really nice looking futuristic blade here. We just take it, plug it in. And there we have the Megazord sword. Or De the Decorenta Robos is a sword. So what we can do is we can actually plug in the handle to the side of Delta Runner 1 here. We're actually, what is going on down there? No idea, but also I'm messing up the transformation. So the thruster is what you can do is you can plug these into the side here, like so, twist it like this. And you can actually do what the Red Ranger does in the show where the card is doing a wheelie and slashes and the enemy. You can actually do that with the toy, so that's really cool that they actually replicated that so you're just doing a wheelie and then slash. So that's really cool that you can actually do that for the vehicle mode. Also, it is a rather tight fit. Yeah, there you go. Rather tight fit on mine. They're just strange. But let's go ahead and uh, turn the blade back into storage mode and put it back inside the compartment here. And we'll save that for later. Then we'll go and put the spotlight back. Delta the runner 4. And there you go. So, not much to it, but still. And also you can see the fist right there for Megazord mode. And uh, also, just let me just check. This is here. Oh wait, I have to raise this to lift the fist. This is going to be... It's because for... in the short, I noticed that I, I put the arms the wrong way. So I want to make sure this time for the review, I actually put the arms in the right position. Okay, got it. So you have that. So for comparison, we'll bring in Legends Prime again. And surprisingly, their Delta Runner 4 here is not that much bigger than Legends Prime, surprisingly. Uh, even I was shocked at the fact that Legends Prime was not that much uh, bigger than Delta Runner 4 here. Interestingly enough. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll bring back Gigawatt. So, quite bigger than the Deluxe. So we can get an idea of how that scales. 
So that's Delta Runner 4. So now, last but not least, here we have Delta Runner 5. The Pink Rangers Resort. And I believe it's both... No, 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 actually, I think in Japan it was called Pat Signal. I think, but it has to do with his gimmick. So, but we'll take a closer look at Delta Runner 5 here. As you can see, the windows are split into five sections. We got some pink right under here. And the wheels are nicely painted, which are not painted on the American version, and the number is missing. And also the SPD on the sides is removed. Which is dumb in my opinion, but... And also the silver trim. Looks nice. Same silver inside the sirens. We got some detail on the back. And then on the other side, we have some molded detail. Same with the uh, Delta Runner 4 here, where there is some molded in detail, which is cool. And yeah, so there's the SPD sticker right there. And again, it does roll very, very well. Well, sort of. It just turns by itself for some reason. So the gimmick for Delta Runner 5 here is the fact that you can lift up the signal, turn it around, and then you can put in these cardboard cards on the inside of here and it can get, display a certain signal. Now mine did not come with them because that's like literally the easiest accessory to lose, but I could probably print out the signals on paper and then just put them in and that's fine. Though what is not fine is the fact the American version didn't even include them, the cardboard cutout, and just left it blank. And honestly, that's dumb. The fact that they, they completely uh, eliminated a feature and they didn't even bother like replacing it with something. So I think that's dumb in the American version that they did that. But yeah, so just like in the show, you can actually use that. And also in Megazord mode, this is what was used for the to judge the monsters guilty or innocent. They would actually this would be a big judgment scanner. And there you have that. Let me just clip it in. Also, if you guys are wondering, there's a tab right here, and then there's a clip. So you just flip this around, clip it, and you're good to go. So there you have that. And once again, just for scale, you have Legends Prime. As you can see, like like uh, Delta Runner 4, not much bigger. Then Legends Prime. And then we'll go ahead and we'll bring back Hot Rod. So you can get a sense of scale. As you can see, Hot Rod is bigger than Delta Runner 5 here. So there you have that. And that is all five Zords reviewed. So now comes the exciting part. It's time to get them into Megazord formation, shall we? Let's. Or, as they say in Japan, that come machines, Hashin! And yes, I'll be including subtitles so you guys can understand what the heck I'm saying. So anyways, it is now time to combine all five of these Zords together to form the Delta Squad Mega Zord. Or if you're more of a Super Sentai version, it's time for the Deca Machines to get tie into the Deca Ranger Rubble. So let's go ahead and let's do it. So we're gonna need, for this to be extra fun, let's turn on the electronic back on. Here we go. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take Delta Runner 2 here. Delta Runner 2 is pretty much ready to go. You just fold in the fins right here. Flip up the landing gear. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the front section here. Flip it up. All the way until it clicks into place like that. And then we got the foot. Second verse same as the first. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to take... We're going to take out the gun from Delta Runner 3. And we're going to take out the blade. We're going to take that out. Put them to the side. Close that back up. So very simple what you do with Delta Runner 3, you just flip it up. This tab right here will clip right there. So you just clip it. There you go. You got another foot. All done. So now it's time for the arm. So we're gonna take Delta Runner 5 here. There is a tab right here. You put your finger right there, flip out the fist. So we just flip it out all the way. And then this is gonna be the left hand. And honestly, one thing I wasn't paying attention to with the short is looking at the thumbs. This is obviously meant to be the left fist, as you can see. So, this is the left fist, so that's all done. Then we're going to take Delta Runner 4. What we're going to do is we're going to take out the spotlight. Then we're going to do the same thing. Put your finger on the tab. Flip out the fist. This will be the right hand. So we get that done. And now here comes the fun part. We're going to take Delta Runner 1 here. We're going to take this front of the vehicle. We're going to flip out this section here. These will form the Gazord connectors. So we take it, flip it up, like so. So now we're going to take the Zords, take Delta Runner 2 here. There is a hole right there and there is, it lines up with the connected port. Just fit it in, push it. Oh, accidentally press the button. Now you're just going to take it. Maybe it's on the wrong foot. Take it. Doesn't want to fit in for some reason. Come on. 
Come on, we've done this before. Come on. Why are you fighting? Eh, come on. There we go, we got it. That will be the connection sound effect that the Zord, the, the Delta Runner one makes. Second verse, same as the first. Slot. Zord connector. Plug it in. And that will let you know that it has been connected. So now the next thing we're gonna do, this is gonna be the left arm. So we're gonna go ahead and put this upwards. Make sure the fist is facing up for this. Plug it. And there you go. Take the right arm. Plug it. There we go. Now we're gonna come over here to the back. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these two sections right here. You're gonna put your finger right here on this tab. Pull it down. Second verse, same as the first. Take your finger. Pull this down. Then what we're gonna do is you're gonna take this panel and you're gonna pull it up. Like so. So then now, this is where the magic happens. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lift up this entire section right here. Split it. As you can see, the head is hidden inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two sections here. And if you look very carefully, there are these two sections right here. They are bent, molded inside. That's where these two slots are gonna slot in. So we're just gonna take the body. That's where the connection sound effects. So we're gonna take, I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but we're gonna take the slots, plug it in. Like so. I'm gonna raise the arm for this. So as you see the connection port, it slotted in. And then mold it piece side. Check the other side. And uh, yeah, it will slot it in. So the last thing you gotta do is you have to just when you're doing this process, you wanna press the body inside. So hold on, let me go ahead and disconnect this real quick. So what you want to do for this section is that when you want to connect these two sections to the sides of the body, you want to press it in, like so, until you hear that tab. Let me do it again just to uh, demonstrate. So when you're doing this, you want to push until you hear a click. So listen very carefully. Hear that click? That lets you know that the sides have been connected in properly. And that will lock everything in place. Now all you do is just flip the arms down, like so. And there we go, there we have the Delta Squad Megazord in its Megazord formation. Or in Super Sentai, here we have the Dekaranger Robo fully assembled. And it looks awesome. It looks really, really cool. And it looks just like in how it does in the show, and that looks awesome. And as you can see, exposed here, we got some more chrome right here. We have these extra sirens that were hidden on the inside of the Delta Runner 1. So now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and give him his weapon. So we'll go ahead and we'll take his sword. Go ahead and recombine it together. Plug it in. And we'll go ahead and give it to his right hand. Like so. Oh, the handle folded. it. Plug it in. And there we go. Now he can hold his sword. And then we'll go ahead and give him his blaster. So we're going to go ahead and just give it to him. Plug it in. Like so. And now he can blast his enemies and slash at them to finish them. And yeah, now there you have the Delta Squad Megazord or the Deca Ranger Robo armored up and it looks awesome. So let's take a close look here at the head sculpt and as you can see, it looks just like how it does in the show. He has the SPD logo on his head. I believe this is also a sticker. He has like a visor on his head, like here is like a police helmet. We have SPD on the sides, the fins on his head. His head is a giant siren, which is cool. And then we have like side sirens on his helmet right there and he even has like a like a microphone like a police uh like a uh, one of those like uh, patrol cops so that looks cool so as you i accidentally pressed the button for this but it, there are two exclusive sound effects when in megazord mode so this one that we're about to hear is actually the finishing attack so let's go ahead and give a listen That sound effect is the finishing attack. Either the Delta Squad Megazord blasts its enemies to oblivion or slashes them and then they explode. And then the other sound effect, which I accidentally pressed, is the Megazord combination effect. So when the Megazord is fully combined, we would hear that sound effect. So let's go ahead and hear it one more time. And this is also the sound effect you guys heard, me, you guys heard in the YouTube short I made to uh, announce that this guy would be the next review. So, very, very cool, he looks very nice, and yeah, 
Literally a Power Rangers dream come true. I finally got a Delta Squad Megazord toy and I get to play with it. So that is very, very cool. So as I mentioned before, you can also do the gimmick where you just open the signal and you can actually fold the arm sideways like in the show, but you can actually, if you have a guilty or innocent uh, like paper cutout, you can put it in there sideways and then you can actually imitate what it does in the show. So that's pretty cool. And also another thing you can do that is actually was in uh, both Deco Ranger and uh, SPD, you can actually have uh, the spotlight sticking out of the arm. So if you put the spotlight this way, you can actually do what the Megazord does in the show. And you can actually uh, like use a giant spotlight. So that's another thing that you can do. And then there's one more thing that we can do with the Delta Squad Megazord. Let me just put the swords aside. If you guys remember the handcuffs from earlier, you can actually give them to the Megazord. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the handcuffs from uh, Delta Runner 2 real quick. Let's go ahead and remove them from their resting place like so. Then let's go ahead and recombine them. So let's flip out the post like so. Let's recombine them together. Yeah, there we go. And now this handle is for the Megazord to hold like so. So you just plug them in. And there you go, the Megazord now has his handcuffs. So, in the show, what he would do is he would place the handcuffs over the giant monster or the robot, and there would be like this police tape that would like wrap around the enemy and they wouldn't be able to move. So that's what this is supposed to replicate. So you can just actually do that. You can actually put the handcuffs over any like robot or something. And like, you can actually like uh, put like tape or something to replicate that. So that's very cool that you can actually do that here in, uh, in the Megazord formation. So that is pretty cool that you can actually uh, imitate the show so there you have that now articulation wise this is a power rangers megazord so these toys are not meant designed for the articulation they're more designed for aesthetics and just to play around with but the only articulation you're going to get is the arms the arms move a full 360 and that's pretty much all you're going to get the head does not move the legs will technically they do move but these are more for um these are more for um uh, transformation for uh, Delta Winter 1, but you can't technically move the leg forward. So you can't actually kick stuff if you want to do that. And you can't move the legs back because that will actually break the toy. So the legs don't move back. You technically can untab the feet. So, I mean, they don't really do anything, but you can untab them if you want it. And yeah, so not a lot of posing you can do with the Delta Squad Megazord, but it's not really meant for uh, posing. It's really, it's not, it's more of like for like genuine, like fun play. So like, you just like take the sword, give him a sword and you just like slash like that. So it's meant for like that kind of fun. So if you're looking for like a figure that's highly articulated, then you probably want to get the other Japanese version where that version, it doesn't come uh, decombine. But it does, um, it does have a lot of posability. So if you want a figure that poses, that's still the Delta Squad Megazord, then get that figure. But if you want this to figure itself, then this is where the way you want to go to get the Japanese version. So there you have that. So I'm going to go ahead and take your sword real quick. Because now it's time to do some comparison. So let's go ahead and put the Delta Squad Megazord on the side. And also my camera decided to move on its own again. All right, and let me go ahead and uh, turn it off. Let me put your on switch. There we go. Alright, so you just go ahead and uh, stand right there, Delta Squad Megazord or Deca Ranger Robo. Now, for comparison, let me go ahead and go get him. Well, so let's go ahead and get this started. So, we'll go ahead and start off with the last night Optimus Prime here. Get an idea of how he scales. And as you can see, also, why is my camera moving to the left? That is weird. And as you can see, the Megazord is quite bigger than Prime. And this is old Voyager scale. Now as for new Voyager scale, uh, here we have, uh, also the shoulder just popped off. Why do you keep popping off? Anyways, here we have Earthrise, Optimus Prime, from the War for Cybertron trilogy. So we can see how that works out. So again, like I said, much smaller than the Voyager figures of back in the day when they were actually quite big. Last night Prime being a prime example here. So that. We'll Prime. And uh, Voyager, what else do we got? Here we have uh, Ultra Magnus in his uh, Albino Prime mode. We'll go ahead and put the armor on him in a sec, but I just wanted to see how he scaled in his Albino Prime mode. And as you can see, still is uh, quite a bit shorter than um, the Megazord, but we're going to armor him up right now all right boom so here we have magnus with his armor so we'll go ahead and see how he scales 
with the Delta Squad Megazord. And actually, now that I think about it, I haven't done this before, by the way. I haven't actually scaled them side to side, so I have no idea what the difference is. And Magnus, he's about uh, right here. This general area where the Delta Squad Megazord, but still taller than him. Honestly, when the Delta Squad Megazord first arrived, I wasn't expecting it to be this big. I thought it would be a lot, like, a bit smaller than I was expecting, but no, he's pretty big. Which is kind of crazy, but, so that's how Magnus scales. With, uh, gigawatt. No, no, dot gigawatt. Pff. I mean, with, um, with the Delta Squad Megazord, and also, I believe, Ultra Magnus was my last review. Speaking of gigawatt, here he is. So, a deluxe with the uh, Delta Squad Megazord, and as you can see, quite smaller. In comparison, so. Like about the leg. Of the Delta Squad Megazord. So there we have Gigawatt. Here we have Hot Rod again in his robot mode. Previous Deluxe. This is how big Deluxe uses to be before they got significantly smaller. As you can see, Gigawatt is much smaller than Hot Rod. Hot Rod is much bigger. That's how big Deluxes were back in the day. Like 2015, 16, 17. So you see Hot Rod is like about right here, the leg of the Delta Squad Megazord. And last but not least, here we have Generations, Legend Class, or Reveal the Shield, depending on whichever box you got him in. Optimus Prime, and he's not going to stand, so we're just going to put him in the front. Right here, and uh... Yeah. Tiny. Tiny Optimus Prime. Very small. Very, very small. So. There you have that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna wrap this up. So overall, what do I think of the Delta Squad Megazord? I absolutely love it. I grew up with Power Rangers. SPD was my very first Power Rangers series. And now the fact that after so many years of wanting this as a kid, the fact that now I finally got one, I'm the happiest. I'm so happy. Even the fact that, the fact that like every day I wake up, I get to like see the Delta Squad Megazord just standing there like so powerful and stuff is really cool. Because I, I have it displayed in front of my bed, if you guys remember. So, or rather, it's uh, my display of, like collection is like in front of my bed. So, basically I wake up and I always just see my toys. Probably the coolest thing a collector could have, to be honest. Is that, that you see the collection that you've uh, worked to make just in front of you. So, just going ahead and I'm putting, storing away the accessories. And put the handcuffs back. I think it's the wrong one. There we go. Put this back. Oh no, that's still. Um, yeah, that's annoying. Uh, doesn't want to plug in. Why do you not want to? Why do you not want to plug in? At the very end of the review. Come on. Did I did I put this on wrong? I think I put this on backwards anyway. Yep, I put it on backwards. This was correct the way I had it before. Um, yeah. There we go. Now it is correct. Now we we'll just take the other one. There. Look at it. There we go. But yeah, so overall, the Delta Squad Megazord, especially for the Japanese version for a reasonable price, it was absolutely worth every single penny. So overall, what do I think about the Delta Squad Megazord? It's a child's dream come true. It's a half the sky. And if you guys are a current Power Rangers fan, specifically a fan of like the older shows, I highly recommend you pick this guy up. Especially since Power Rangers SPD, just in general, is one of the best uh, Power Rangers series that has ever came out. And there are a few good Power Rangers series. So if you guys have never seen Power Rangers before, if you guys decide to give it a chance, definitely don't skip SPD. You guys want to take a look at that. It's probably one of the best uh, incarnations of Power Rangers. Definitely for sure. And I'm not just saying that because I love the show. I'm saying that because just the show in general. It has good writing, actors, and all that stuff. So seeing this thing in action, it, it, it's, it's really cool. But no, yeah, so... The Japanese version of the Delta Squad Megazord, if you guys are able to find it for a cheap price, definitely pick this guy up if you can. But if you guys have no choice but to get the American version, then it won't be a bad purchase. And if you're a Power Rangers collector, then definitely add this guy to your collection for sure. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, I'll let the Delta Squad Megazord speak for me. And, uh, yeah. So this is, well, review number 23 on the Delta Squad Megazord from Power Rangers SPD. Also, the Deca Ranger Robo from Toksu Sentai Deca Ranger. 
And overall, what did I think of this guy? I think this guy is pretty cool. And this fact that this guy hasn't been released since 2004. And I got him for a very reasonable price. So definitely worth every single penny. Overall, I, I have a lot of fun messing with this guy. And overall, it's a child's deed come true. So, as a Power Rangers fan, I am happy that I finally have this guy. And if you guys are want a Megazord in your collection, definitely, this guy is definitely worth the pickup. And that's pretty much it. So, there's my review on the Delta Squad Megazord from Power Rangers SPD. So overall, what do you guys think of this figure? Do you guys like this figure? Do you guys think that... Uh, the Japanese one is better than the American version, or are you guys fine with either one? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd very much like to hear your thoughts. And also, next review, Legacy Blaster is next for reviewing, because I actually got him a while back. Actually, before I got the Delta Squad Megazord, so he is next to review. So be sure to look, look out for my review for the Transformers Legacy Blaster. And, well, that's pretty much it. So, if you guys missed my previous reviews, they will be on the end card. I believe the previous review I did was for Kingdom Ultra Magnus, if I remember correctly. So, you should be seeing the end cards right about now. And you should be seeing my previous review. So, if you guys are interested in seeing all my reviews, the link to my playlist will be in the description down below. That shows all of my playlists ever since I first started. And also, what do you guys think about Power Rangers in general? Do you guys like Power Rangers? Are you guys, like, kind of eh on Power Rangers? And overall, just like... Like, what do you guys think about Power Rangers? And also the fact that, um, well, if you guys like this review, what other Power Rangers products should I review next? Because I know there's a ton of Power Rangers stuff that I could be hunting after. So what would you guys like? If you guys like this Power Rangers review, what other Power Rangers item should I review next? Morphers, Megazords, weapons? Let me know in the comments down below. Or figures. Because there's a lightning collection and stuff. So let me guys know in the comments down below what you guys would like to see me review next. And Transformers reviews as well. What Leave a suggestion down below on what you guys would like me to check out next. And that's pretty much all I have to say. So, as usual, links in the description down below for my DeviantArt and the Galaxy Defender Discord server. So if you're interested in checking out either of the links, will be in the description down below. And if you guys liked the video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you guys are new to the channel, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notifications for every single one of my videos. And please be sure to join the Galaxy Defenders. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the Delta Squad Megazord from Power Rangers SPD. Otherwise known as the Deca Ranger Robo from Toksu Sentai Deca Ranger. And this is MKN4, aka Meta Knight in N4, signing out. Peace out, Galaxy Defenders. And remember, you never know unless you find out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, you guys. Black out.